Okay, let's get started talking about HTML or Hypertext Markup Language and learning a little bit more about what it looks like and how it's progressed. So from the Chapter 1 folder, I've opened the file called Chapter 1 HTML. It's actually a PDF file, so you'll need Adobe Acrobat or the free Adobe Reader to open it. So let's go ahead and get started. Hypertext Markup Language, or HTML, is the main markup language we use for building web pages. HTML elements are the basic building blocks of the web pages. HTML consists of elements, also known as tags, that are enclosed in angle brackets within the web page content itself. HTML normally comes in pairs, one tag to turn something on and one to turn it off. For example, let's take a closer look. Over on the left-hand side, you'll see that I have the HTML tag. The HTML tag is simply HTML within angle brackets, and the close HTML tag has a forward slash in front of it. So whenever you see a forward slash at the beginning of a tag, that's telling the browser to end some formatting. So typically, the HTML tag is the first tag you see in your source code. That tells the browser, hey, an HTML page or web page is coming. And the one that is the close HTML tag tells the browser, hey, we're finishing up with this page. We're just about done. Over here is an example of the bold tag. So if you have some text you're placing on your web page and you want to make some of it bold, you would put the bold tag right in front of where you want the text to become bold, and the end bold tag would go right where you want the bolding to stop. And by the way, a good resource that I like for learning about HTML in general, and more specifically HTML5, is www.w3schools.com. It's a great resource. So let's dive in and look a little bit closer at HTML tags. We also have things called attributes and values. So you can see here I've got the link tag within the angle brackets, but I've also put things called attributes and values in here. So an attribute is an option for that tag, and then the value tells you which option we used. HTML code is not case sensitive, by the way. I use it here to differentiate tags visually. For example, some hand coders like to make the actual tag name caps and use lowercase for the rest of it. Now you're typically not going to be writing all your own code. You'll be using a program like Dreamweaver, but it is good to understand if you need to go in and look at the source code and get an understanding of what all these things mean. So in this particular example, I've got the link tag. I've added an attribute and I've added a value. And here's another attribute and another value. You'll notice that the attributes within the same tag are separated with a word space, and the values are entered within quote marks. HTML allows images and objects to be embedded and can be used to create interactive forms as well. So here's an example of the image tag. It's simply the letters IMG inside the angle brackets. But you have to tell it a few things, and one of the main ones is an attribute called source. So SRC is the source attribute, and that's telling the browser which photo you want to use, and in some cases you have to tell it where that photo is located. So here, source equals, and notice it's in quotations, beanblossom.jpg. That's the actual name of my photo, which happens to be this beautiful photo right here. Sometimes we have other attributes such as the alt tag. The alt tag is useful for if your user, for whatever reason, turns off graphics in their browser, or if for some reason the link gets broken, at least a line of text will appear to tell them what was supposed to show on that page. Typically that doesn't happen, but just in case it does, you can add an alt tag. A more important reason to add an alt tag would be for Section 508 compliance. So if someone who is viewing your content is handicapped and is unable to read the content or see the images on screen, they use a machine called a screen reader. In this particular case, the screen reader would tell them that the Bean Blossom Bridge photo was supposed to appear here since they are unable to view it themselves. So the source attribute defines the image name, and the image tag can have attributes such as height, with an alt as well. We've added two. We've added source and alt, but there are other ones you can add as well. Web browsers can also refer to cascading style sheets, or CSS, to define the appearance and layout of text and other materials. So cascading style sheets is a simple mechanism for adding style, such as fonts, color, and spacing to web documents. 
It's very similar to a program like InDesign or even Word that uses styles to lay out the content. So you might have headline, body copy, photo caption. If you were working with a print document, it's the same basic concept here. Style sheets can be applied to web pages in two different ways. They can be applied within the document itself at the exact spot where they're needed, or a file containing all of the CSS commands can be linked externally to the web page. So for example, to make the background of this web page this beautiful shade of blue, this is what it would look like in HTML code, and this is what it would look like in CSS. Both get us the same end result, we just use different symbols and different coding to get there. The W3C, or World Wide Web Consortium, maintains both HTML and CSS standards. They encourage the use of CSS to maintain consistency. The World Wide Web Consortium is an international community that developed open standards to ensure the long-term growth of the web. You can go to their website and read more about their mission at www.w3.org. The World Wide Web Consortium meets regularly to discuss and set standards for one web, which includes desktop, mobile, and print. HTML5, the latest version of hypertext markup language, is still in its infancy here today in 2011. HTML4 has been around for almost a decade now, and developers seeking new techniques to provide enhanced functionality are being held back by the constraint of language and browsers. So to give developers more flexibility and interoperability, and enable more interactive and exciting websites and applications to be created, HTML5 introduces and enhances a wide range of features, including form controls, APIs, multimedia, structure, and semantics. New features have been introduced to help web developers, and new elements have been introduced based on extensive research, including tips from people who are developing, things they're trying to get the browser to show and aren't appearing properly, so new tags are developed all the time. Here are some examples of some tags that are supported in HTML5. Some of them are new, such as the aside tag and the canvas tag. Some have been around for a while and have just been refined. So that's a little bit of background information on working with HTML. And as we progress, we'll learn more about what tags are used specifically with HTML5.